It's Catherine Norland. Happy Mother's Day. You guys wrote in some questions I had put up on my Instagram. Ask me anything about being a mother. So here we are. So, what is the hardest part about being a mother? I would say not knowing if you're doing the right thing. You know, you're trying to sort through every scenario in life and how to handle it. I mean, is this a teaching moment? Is this a time for tough love? Is this a time for discipline? Sometimes the lines get blurred. And how can I be loving, supportive, and helpful without teaching them to rely on me for everything? So how can I nurture them and give them everything they need, not everything they want, so they can grow into the person, the type of people who can take care of themselves. Basically, the hardest part is not knowing if you're doing everything right, because you can't know the consequences of how you're parenting until sometimes later. So with that in mind, everything you're doing is planting a seed. So we have to stop and ask ourselves: if I plant this seed in my child, what kind of harvest will it bring up? Will saying this or doing this action, will it later grow into something good or not? Is what I'm doing or teaching my child or my words or my actions going to be a blessing or a detriment? to their future. That's tough. Uh, number two, what is it like having a son with autism? Well, it's a learning curve. <laughs> and autism is just one of the diagnoses he's dealing with. I remember when they gave me the first diagnosis and I went into a great time of sadness, mourning over his future, mourning over the life he would never have feeling sad that he wouldn't lead what we would call a normal life. And you guys see him now. He's happy. He's mobile. He's, he's a smart kid. But when they first diagnosed him with developmental delays and cerebral palsy and intellectual disability, which is what they used to call mental retardation, and the doctors all told me that he would never walk or talk. Oh, I was absolutely devastated. I was angry at God. I was confused. I was asking God why he would allow that. Why would he give me a child that at the time, with my limited understanding, I was thinking could not really have a real future in the way that we typically think of someone with success would have. And then when his behavior got completely out of hand and he was acting up all of the time and throwing fits and had to have things a certain way or he would just completely freak out, I realized there's got to be something more than what these doctors are telling me. They must have missed something. Why is he having all this trouble in school and the teachers don't know? Um, they took it upon themselves, um, well, I took it upon myself to go get him tested, to have him tested because these behaviors to me didn't make sense. Because I mean, I've seen a few people with cerebral palsy and they weren't kicking and screaming and hitting themselves. They were able to express themselves. Um, they wouldn't freak out if something green accidentally landed on their plate. So he was displaying all of these like OCD tendencies. So at the age of eight, I finally did um, a several day study with him and a panel of experts who determined not only did he have autism, but he also had ADHD and Tourette syndrome, which explained why he couldn't sit still and he couldn't focus and concentrate and he would make random sounds like barking or other sounds or have these facial twitches, which I didn't understand, but then finally it all made sense. But I have to say in the grand scheme of things, 
I don't think that having a son with autism is any different than having a regular child in the sense, or a typical child, I should say, in the sense that for any kid you have, you have to figure out what works for them, what they like, what they don't like, how to relate to them, how you'll teach them, how you'll discipline them. And yes, there are a lot more unpredictabilities and potential for freakouts. And I need to find more ways to manage those times and you know, try to get him to calm down. But every kid is an individual. And just like not all things work for a typical kid, not all things work for a special kid. And when your child isn't behaving in a way others think is appropriate, <laughs> people feel like they need to step in and give you advice like, well, my brother has an autistic child and this is what you need to do with them. And this is how you have to do it because this is how you need to handle it and this is what's gonna work. You gotta put them in their place. You gotta be firm with them. You gotta show them who's boss. You gotta get after them and scold them. But when I would take that approach, Timmy would be fearful and I could tell it was just, detrimental to his soul when I would raise my voice. So I had to stop taking other advice from people about what worked for them because Timothy is not them. He is not that child. Each child has to be an individual and there is no one size fits all when it comes to parenting typical kids or special needs kids. Number three question you asked me, is it hard to be a mother? Ah, uh, being a mother is the hardest job I've ever had in my life, but the most rewarding. Now, people will tell you it's just for 18 years, but it's not. It's for the rest of your life. And even after they move out, you're still leading them. You're still guiding them. You're still giving them advice. You're still supporting them. You're still there for them. Sometimes you're still sending them money, <laughs> but you're you're being there to support their dreams and their goals and you're trying to steer them in the right direction and helping them through their heartbreaks and it's possible with Timothy he may never move out he may never live on his own so it really could be the rest of my life it's a lifetime commitment my mom she didn't really have to worry about me my parents they raised me well and I know how to take care of myself I know how to manage my money they know I'm married and so I'm like independent. But parents of special needs children really have a whole other level that moves above parenting to sometimes becoming a full-time caretaker. Sometimes you become a full-time caregiver and you may have a child who's 200 pounds in diapers, full grown, with the mental capacity of a three-year-old, maybe even nonverbal. It's like your life is taking care of this wonderful person that you're probably learning so much from when it comes to patience and the kind of unfailing love that God gives us. And I wish, I wish I could take you, all you mamas who are dealing with that, I wish I could get you all together and get you to go to a spa and massage and get a couple days away, but you know, it could be a, a rest of your life thing. I just wanna say, our jobs as mothers, I know I'm supposed to be doing a Q and A, but I can't stop myself from teaching sometimes, as you can see. I, I, I wanna talk about what it's like to be a mother because what a mother is supposed to do is smooth out all of your kids' rough edges. The word mother in Hebrew is am or em, and it appears 25 times in the scriptures. Now the first use in Hebrew of the word M, mother, is in Genesis 3.20, and that is when Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. Now the first letter stands for strong leader, God the Father, and deity. The picture is a literal ox, which is a symbol of position and leadership. A mother protects her herd from the predators. And the second letter stands for water, liquid, raging, chaos. 
The picture is flowing water, waves of water. It could mean life-giving waters or it could mean destructive waters. Now, I bring this up because many of you may have had mothers who were not very nice to you. You know, a mother who was destructive water and the things your mother said or did sometimes decades later still haunt you. But if if you're a mom that's living water, life-giving water, it's a stream that's ever flowing, you will find that you have a child that's rough, rough like a rock in a stream. So our jobs to be good mothers, even if ours were terrible, is to be like a stream that continually flows over the rocks. And when you, when the water continues to flow in the stream, it flows over and over, this is the rock, it flows over and over and over and over. And as mothers, that's our job, is to smooth out our children. Sometimes to be that flowing water, sometimes looks like it, you're teaching your child the same lesson over and over and over and over again. As we mothers, sometimes we feel like we want to lose our patience and say, I told you this 600 times. Why don't you get it? But that's our job is to just keep on teaching them until they get it. You know, it's like Proverbs 22, 6 says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he was, when he is old, he will not depart from it. So no matter how tired we are, of saying the same things over and over and over. Our job as running water is to keep flowing until the rough edges are all smoothed out. And that sometimes can be the hardest part. If we give up too early because we're tired of saying the same things, they may not learn the lessons that they need to learn in order to become a great person and a, a contribution to society instead of a drain. When we flow into their lives, it's important because then they can later flow into others' lives and eventually even into our own. The love and the flow you put into them, you'll get back in your elder years as they flow back into you. So it's worth everything you put in that that you put into those children. So um, on a side note, if they aren't getting what you're trying to teach them, then I would say try different means of communicating and not always the same thing. Um, some might learn verbally, others might learn by example. Some might learn from other people better, uh, classes, books. Some might learn through going through the circumstances. Um, some learn from scenarios, from movies, but you find the best way to teach your child what they need to know to give them the best chance at life. That, I think, is the hardest part. Number four, you asked, how do you juggle between being a mother and acting at the same time? I wish it was only those two things. No, I don't. I have so many other interests. This is what makes it even harder because it's not just I'm on set all day acting and then I'm a mom because I'm also trying to be a homemaker, but my place is a mess. Um, trying to be the best wife I can be, but my passion is like poetry and writing. So carving out that time to write and I'm also interested in filmmaking. So I've got these movies I want to make. So it's, it feels like sometimes like I have five full-time jobs. <laughs> so you know what, in order to do any kind of career and be a mother, some things have to give. I've, I've had to change how much I work and what I work on. And when I'm on set, a lot of times if it's been a long day, I start getting, I start getting lonely to see my kids, especially because they are on my screensaver. So every time I look at my phone, their picture comes up and it makes my heart skip a beat. 
And then when I'm at home taking care of the kids, I try to make that time sacred, to have certain hours to put aside where I can focus on them and not work and try not to look at the phone and the messages. And now that I'm not actively pursuing going after acting so much as a career every waking hour like I used to, um, on all the acting websites trying to find jobs and submit myself for roles and get auditions and do all this, it has made my life a little easier, but I have to admit, sometimes it is a struggle because you have to really focus on what you're doing at the time. Like that old song says, love the one you're with. So when I'm with my acting crew, I gotta focus on my acting job. When I'm with my kids, I'm gonna do my best to focus on them and not think about work when I'm with them and not think about them when I'm at work because it just gets you to not be able to focus on who you're with. When I'm at home cuddling with the kids and I want to give them that focus, that, that appropriate time for them. <laughs> Number five, you asked me, what's the thing you love most about being a mother? I find my kids love me no matter what. If I mess up, my friends may dump me. If I don't do great at an audition, I don't book the job but they still love me. I don't always do everything right and they still love me. And when we go through trials and tough times, they are my rock. They are by my side. Maybe they can't help, but they comfort me. They give me hugs and kisses when I'm down. They are my biggest cheerleaders and support system. Kids are resilient. They are quick to forgive. They love you when you mess up, when you admit you're wrong, and you should. You should, you know, you say, I did wrong, you know, I need to do better. They'll say, oh, it's okay, mommy. And when you apologize and you ask them to forgive you, they give you a big hug, and they do. They forgive you. The love between a parent and a child is a sacred bond. It shows us just a tiny fraction of the love God has for us. You know, as a parent, you would do anything for your child to make sure they are taken care of and they have what they need. And I love being able to give them love. I love seeing the joy on their face when they get a gift. And as a parent, you love to bless your children, even if they didn't do anything to earn it. Just like we read about our heavenly parent, our Father God. He says in Matthew 7, 7 through 11, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. We love to do that for our kids. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you... If your son asks for bread, we'll give him a stone. Or if he asks for a fish, we'll give him a snake. If you, being evil then, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? Wow. I mean, you may be going, wait a minute, I am not evil. I get it, but it's comparing ourselves to a holy God. Compared to a holy God, we are evil. <laughs> and, and none of you, if your children asked for a fish, would give them a snake. And now, I might not give them fish, I might give mine a veggie burger, since I'm vegan, but <laughs> that's beside the point. You wanna give to your kids. You wanna give them what they want. Um, we want to bless our children. Imagine, imagine how much more God wants to bless us. We are his children. Being able to show love to my kids and teach them about, about God who loves them so much, he loves them more than I could. And he wants to bless them in a way much more profound and bigger than is even possible for me. And he loves them with an unfailing love that my human mind 
can't comprehend. I'm not always patient and kind, but when we strive to be the type of parent God is and love them the way that they deserve to be loved, oh, oh, and my favorite thing, I don't even know if I really answered. My favorite thing about my kids is they make me laugh, their humor. Question number six you guys asked is, what are the things you love about your kids? Oh, here it is again, I have to say, sense of humor. They just know how to make you laugh and smile, even if you're having a bad day. I love their faith and trust in me. They are vessels of love. They act like, like I've never done them wrong. They don't hold grudges. They actually really forgive me when I ask them to. And they don't bring it up later when we're in an argument like adults do. <laughs> they are honest. Sometimes maybe a little too honest. Is that a thing? We just have to teach them when it's okay to share their honesty in public and when their honesty should only be shared in private. But mom, I don't want to sit next to her. She stinks. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> and they don't hold on to things that hurt them and keep rehearsing them in their mind for hours, for days, for weeks, like we adults do. You could learn so much from watching a kid. How they love, how they don't discriminate, how they take joy in simple things, how they'll literally get up and dance if you buy them their favorite treat, or they'll be screaming with happiness over an unexpected gift. They are pure. They don't put on pretenses. They don't pretend to like something if they don't. Personally, I love how open Timothy is. He's clever. Yeah, he sees things differently. He's got a great memory. He cares about the details. Um, one thing Timmy and I love to do <laughs> together is to express ourselves through song that we make up, especially like, well, we do that a lot. We turn our conversations into songs and especially like if we're <laughs> having an argument, you know, like a dance battle, but <laughs> it's like a song battle. And we just had one of these yesterday morning because he wanted to go to the store and get a Steam card and buy some video games. And he was singing to me about how we need to go get the Steam card. And I was saying, but you haven't earned it. You haven't done your chores yet. And we're coming up with these hooks and we're just, you know, he's telling me his point of view and I'm telling him my point of view through just, crazy songs we're making up. So song battle arguing is something I do with Timmy. Um, each of us stating our position and trying to be funny with our lyrics and hooks um, that we come up with on the spot. Now, Eli, he doesn't have much for language skills yet being two and a half, but he is like all hands on. He loves to be cuddled. He loves to be rough house and bounced. We bounce on the exercise ball and we dance around. He loves to be like held. And I love how he just wants to like jump off a tall surface and into your arms. And he's just positive you're going to catch him. And even when he scolded for doing something he shouldn't, his arms, it was big teary eyes. His arms are still open. He still wants to be held and um, he keeps me on my toes. He loves to explore any minute he could run out the door. So I always got to keep an eye on him. You guys asked me is how do you, how did you feel when you got pregnant with your first baby for the first time? <gasps> oh my goodness. Um, is this the part where I make up a fairy tale? Thing, letting you guys know how wonderful it is. Back it up, because that would be lying. First time I found out I was pregnant, I was angry. I didn't feel like I was ready. Even though God had been talking to me about having a child for two years prior, when I would sit down and he would tell me about this kid and what he would be like and what I should name him, 
God was preparing me in advance, and yet I'm hard heart, I'm hard headed. Uh, it still came as a shock to me. So when I found out, I cried. I thought my career was over. I thought I would never work again as an actress. And people told me I couldn't do both. And then when I found out he was special needs, I sank to a new depth. And I put all of my dreams of acting and show business in a box and shoved them under my bed. And I decided, I guess this is just my life now. I thought... God wanted me to be an actor, but I guess that's never going to happen now. That never worked out. And I poured everything I had into taking care of him. I mean, when he finally made it out of the intensive care unit after 118 days, long, grueling days of not knowing whether he would live or die, and, and I had to become like, a nurse overnight practically because here I am now dosing out all of these different medicines not knowing like all these different doctors he has how does he know how do they know what each are giving them and if they're going to react with each other and I worried and he was so little and I think I took him home he was four months old but he was like barely six pounds and and he had all these things wrong with him and he he needed to get surgery and they're like, well, we can't operate on him till he's 10 pounds. And it was a lot of stuff. He had, between doctors and therapists, he had 10 appointments a week, which didn't leave time for me to have a career or pursue anything else. Then when he was three and a half, God blessed me with my most favorite acting job I've ever had. And he showed me my child was not a detriment to my career, but a blessing. And I booked my first ever national commercial for Mass Mutual with Timothy. We co-starred in it. And honestly, I wouldn't have booked it without him. Yeah. You already have two blonde boys so would you ever adopt a girl of a different race, like Asian or black? I would have no problem adopting a girl from any other race. We actually, when Timmy was a baby, were signed up to do the foster to adopt program. And we were thinking about getting him a sister. Um, at the time, I thought, I didn't know Timmy had special needs. I thought he was just because he was premature, he just needed to catch up. And I thought once he catches up and things even out and we have like moments of peace, which never really happened, then we would be able to take a child in. But when the diagnosis came and I mean, at the time he was not only on like 20 doses of meds a day. He was on oxygen 24 seven. So I, everywhere I went with him with oxygen tanks and he had to have a pulse, pulse ox, you know, we had to, it was constantly like, is he okay? Is he living? You couldn't sleep cause you wondered if he's gonna t toss and turn during the night and wrap the oxygen cord around his neck. And like you had all these worries as a new parent and then he's coming home on all this medical stuff and it just, got to the point where we were like, ah, I don't feel mentally, spiritually, emotionally equipped to take in another child. Cause well, maybe it would be different if it was a baby, but we were looking into the foster to adopt program. So kids who end up in foster homes have gotten there for a reason. And a lot of times there ends up being a lot of emotional stuff that comes with that where they they're missing their parents their parents maybe abused them or abused drugs or they were you know so we didn't feel like it was the right time it was a good idea at the time um but for these reasons we decided not to go forward to to do the foster to adopt program and um we like i said we checked it out when he was a baby but then when his care got more intense Whew. Now that he's older and more self-sufficient, I think about it sometimes, but then I go, you know what? I'm not ready. 
I'm not ready for a huge commitment to put more on my plate because I feel like my life is so full right now that I would have no time to accomplish everything I want to accomplish in life. Um, however, I'm open. If God puts it on my heart and prompts me and says, hey, do this. If the Lord impresses upon me, this is what I want you to do and he tells me to do it and the time is right, I would obey. I would obey if that's what God told me to do. How does your experience of being a mom help you in acting? Being a mom has made me such a better actress. It has unlocked emotions in me to such a great depth I never thought possible. I mean, when I married my husband, I thought I knew what love was. But when you have a child, it's love that's like a hundred times more. The kind of love you would throw yourself in front of a bus from to save, to save your child. Now you might not throw yourself in front of a bus to save your spouse. Not that you don't love them, but maybe you feel like they could take care of themselves. But you just love your child so much because they're so vulnerable and, and you get angry when someone tries to hurt them and you feel more pain when they become hurt. You hurt for them more than you hurt for yourself. Now, someone can put you down and berate you, but oh, oh, just try to do that to my kid and see what happens. You feel everything for them on a much deeper level. And I think being open to feel those emotions and explore them has made me a much better and more vulnerable actress than I was before. Yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely a better actress. Advice to future moms. Be kind to yourself. Realize you are doing the best that you can. Don't be so hard on yourself when you mess up. You apologize and you try to make it better, but be kind to yourself. You know what? These kiddos didn't come with instruction manuals. So realize you're both going to be growing as you go. They will force you to be better because they will mirror what you do. <laughs> so you will have to step up your game because um, they're going to do what you do. So, but take care of yourself. Rest. Pray for them. Take a deep breath. And don't beat yourself up if you can't be super mom. Some days you won't get to shower. Most days, you'll never be able to go to the bathroom without your kid barging in or pounding on the door until you answer. You may feel like you never get a moment of peace, but cherish every bit of it, even if nothing on your to-do list gets done because you're busy cleaning up all of their messes and taking care of all of their little hearts and minds and souls. And some days you just have to surrender and realize if the kids are alive at the end of the day, I've done my job. <laughs> Thank you for watching my Mother's Day video. Live true, love hard, and shine bright.